Okay, let's take a look at the midpoint rule for finding or approximating the areas under curves. Now this will actually be a little bit easier if we pick a particular example. So we'll pick one that's fairly straightforward. f of x is equal to x squared. And just to give it a number, let's find the area under the curve between 0 and 2. So a will be equal to 0, b will be equal to 2. So we're going to go from 0 to 2 over here. Now, what the midpoint form is all about, let's take a look at what inscribed and circumscribed rectangles look like, first of all. Now, these are different ways of approximating it. And suppose you decided, uh, in this case, we will divide it up into four intervals. So we will let n be equal to four rectangles. And again, you can use 4, 8, 16, however many rectangles you want. We'll start with 4 just to keep it uh, fairly simple. So if I divide it up into four parts, uh, let's take a look at a couple of possibilities. Now the first possibility is if you decided to use inscribed rectangles. So let's see what that would look like. Now, if you used inscribed rectangles, you evaluate each rectangle at the left endpoint of the interval. So if you did that, here's what it would look like. So what you're actually doing is picking the left side of each rectangle. So you're going to evaluate it at this point, at this point, at this point, and at this point. So that will give you the height of each of your four rectangles. Now the problem with that is all the rectangles are inscribed, so the final area is going to be too small because you didn't account for things like this area, and this area, and this area, and this area. So because you didn't account for those, the final area will be too small. Now that's the problem with using the left side of the interval and uh, inscribed rectangles. Now another possibility would be to use the right side and circumscribed rectangles. Let's take a look at that. So what that's going to look like will be this. Now this time you're going to evaluate the height of each rectangle at the right side. So this point, this point, this point, and this point. Now if you do that, each one of the rectangles will be outside the curve or circumscribed. And the problem with this is this answer is going to be too big because this area is excessive and this one and this one and this one. So you wind up with uh, an answer that's too big. Now the next thing we'll look at, suppose you decided to do this. Suppose you decided to Rather than using the left side or the right side, suppose you decided to use the midpoint of each interval. So come to each of these intervals and pick the midpoint. So I'll put a little mark here at the halfway point of each one. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So come halfway to each interval. So what we're going to use is this, 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 and this. Now watch what happens if you do that. If you now draw your rectangles, they'll look something like this. We'll go straight up to here. Uh, straight up to here, and we'll go up to where the, the uh, midpoint of the interval intersects the curve. Now, from here, if you did the following, if you went across to here, there's one rectangle right there. Then from here, go across to here, Then go across to here, and finally across to here. Now what that's going to give us, let's go ahead and turn off these circumscribed ones. It'll look like this. Now your rectangles look like this. And we'll go over here to here. So you've got four rectangles. Now look at the advantage that this offers you. What that does is, and we'll extend this one up just a little bit. So we'll go from here just to complete that rectangle, uh, go on up to here. Alrighty, now what that does is this. For every part that's a little too big, like right in here, you have, a, or a little too, then you have another one that's a little too small over here. So it's too big here, and it's too small here. Uh, too big here, too small here, and so on. 
too big here, too small here. So these will tend to balance each other out. Now it won't balance out perfectly and give you an exact answer, but it will give, should be a better approximation for four rectangles than either the inscribed or the circumscribed. So now let's put some specific points on here. Uh, we will divide this thing up into four equal size rectangles. Now eventually it comes down to this. You want the height times the width of each rectangle. So first of all, let's get the width. Um, if I did this, the width of each rectangle, I think I'll, think I'll put some specific numbers on here. Uh, this will be zero. Here is one and here is two. So to find the width of each rectangle, that's going to be this value right here. It'll have delta x for that one, delta x for this one, delta x for this one, and delta x for this one. So all four rectangles of equal width. Now what the width would be, delta x, is just going to be the width of the interval, which would be b minus a divided by the number of rectangles, which would be n. So in this problem, uh, b is equal to 2, a is equal to 0, so it'll be 2 minus 0 divided by, we were using four rectangles, which would be 1 half, so that's going to be delta x. So delta x will be 1 half. So I'll put a little box around this just to preserve it. So there's that, that, and that. So the width of each rectangle will be 1 half. Um, so what that means is that this one is one half, this one is one half, this one is one half, and this is one half. Okay, so a few more specific points. If each one is one half, this is the point, uh, this would be one fourth, or pardon me, one half. This would be one, this would be three halves. So you set up your interval that goes from uh, 0 to 1 half, 1, 3 halves, and 2. Now, when you do your formula, this is the area of one rectangle. If you wanted the area of four rectangles, you would have this. It would be the summation from i <coughs> equals 1 to 4 of <coughs> the height and the width of each rectangle. Now, the width of the rectangle, summation from i equals 1 to 4, will be delta x. The height of the rectangle will be the function evaluated at some point x sub i. Let's see what that's going to be. What this would be, this is going to be x sub 1 right here. This would be x sub 2 right here. This would be x sub 3 right here. And this is going to be x sub 4 right here. So what are those points? And again, just look at your graph and get them off the graph. If this thing is one half wide and you're at one half, this one has got to be, and I think I'll do them in red where they kind of stand out, this has got to be one fourth, this one has got to be three fourths, this one's got to be five fourths, and this one's got to be seven fourths. So what you're going to find is the height of each of these rectangles, which would be, say, this height right here. Now what that's going to be, this particular one would be f evaluated at 7 fourths. Uh, this one right here would be f evaluated at, oops, at 5 fourths and so on. Should be right over here. So f evaluated at 5 fourths. Okay, so what this is going to give you would be the following. Um, you've got f evaluated at x1 times delta x plus uh, f evaluated at x sub 2 times delta x plus f evaluated at x sub 3 times delta x plus f evaluated at x sub 4 times delta x. Now, we'll go ahead and put numbers into these things, and what they are is this. Um, x sub 1 is 1 fourth, so I'll put a little circle around each one of these. x sub 1 is 1 fourth. x sub 2 is 3 fourths. x sub 3 is 5 fourths. And x sub 4 is 7 fourths. 
So specifically, what this will turn into now would be this. Uh, now, each one of your delta x's is one half. So this is going to be f evaluated at one fourth times the width of the interval, which is one half plus f evaluated at three fourths times the width of the interval, which is one half. Each one of the delta x's is one half plus f evaluated at five fourths and then finally here times one half and then the last one would be f evaluated at seven fourths times one half. Now what this looks like would be the following. Uh, to find f at one fourth all you do is take a one-fourth and plug it into the original function up here, which is x squared. So f at one-fourth would be plug in a one-fourth into this thing. So what that's going to give you would be uh, plug a one-fourth into x squared and you would get one-fourth squared times the width of the interval, which is one-half. Now plug in a three-fourths, so you'd get a three-fourths squared times one-half. Then finally plug in the five-fourths squared times one-half. And then for the last step, plug in the seven-fourths, so seven-fourths squared times one-half. Okay, now the next step, go ahead and square each one of these. So this would be one-sixteenth times one-half plus, and square the top and square the bottom, nine-sixteenths times one-half plus, square the top and the bottom, this would be 25 sixteenths times one-half, and this would be 49 sixteenths times one-half. Now, for computational purposes, if you wanted to, since each one of these is one-half, you could actually factor a one-half out and then add the remaining fractions together. But I think I'm going to leave them in there just to graphically point something out. This will turn into 1 over 32 plus, and then this one will become 9 over 32, then plus... Um, 25 over 32, and then finally plus 49 over 32. Now just to point out what each one of these things are, these are the actual areas. So, I think I'll do it in red. This area right here, um, for the first one, this shaded area right here, would be 1 over 32. This shaded area right here, would be 9 over 32. The area of the third rectangle would be 25 over 32. And then finally, the area of this fourth rectangle up here would be 49 over 32. So that's what the area, these things are. Now, if you add all these together, what you would get would be 84 over 32. So add them all up and you wind up with 84 over 32. And if you simplify that, it will simplify down to 21 eighths. Now again, what this is, this is the approximate area, not the exact area, but the approximate area um, using four intervals or four rectangles.
Okay, so to go through the process again, the idea is start with, uh, I would start with this definition right here. Um, just the area is going to be equal to um, the summation from i equals 1 to 4 of this thing. So what this is, this is the height of the rectangle, this is the width of the rectangle. And split it up into four parts. And the only tricky part really is identifying uh, at what point do you want to evaluate it. Well, go to the midpoint of each interval, so you can have one-fourth, three-fourths, five-fourths, seven-fourths, and that tells you what number to plug into the function. Uh, you just plug it into x squared, you go from zero to four, and that's four. Now if you had, let's double the number of rectangles. If you had eight rectangles, then each interval would be one-fourth wide, and delta x would be equal to one-fourth. Then you would pick the halfway point of each one of those, evaluate the function at that point, and you would have the area, estimated area, the approximate area, with eight rectangles. So you can pick as many intervals or rectangles as you want to. But anyway, you start with this, and then individually, and I think I'll put it right here, if you individually evaluate all four of them, so there are four rectangles, and then just add the results together. Now if you had eight rectangles, then you have eight terms here, and the width of each uh, interval would be one-fourth. So if you go through the process, uh, plug the point that you're interested in into the function, the width of each rectangle is one-half. If you want to, you can factor the one-half out early, but this will give you the individual areas of each of those four rectangles, add them up, and you get the approximate area of the entire thing using four rectangles. So that's a sample of what's something called the midpoint formula, where you use the midpoint of each interval.